What's up, everybody? <sighs> Nick, look at this. This freaking shirt. Some type of like Tommy Bahama shirt. I don't know. Running out of laundry, so I I gotta wear something, right? Anyway, uh, going to uh, the Mikasuki to have myself a little session. Hopefully there'll be some good games there and I won't have to wait long. <laughs> because usually when you go here, it's not as popular as it used to be. Uh, the Mikasuki used to be so fucking popular. They had like the high hand at more frequent rates. Uh, they used to have like this thing called like a progressive jackpot. So if you got like quads or like a straight flush or whatever, like some type of combination of that, like you would get like a prize for that. And then you'd also get like a high hand, like you would like spin the wheel, or whatever, for like uh, like between you get between like a hundred to like five hundred bucks. <sighs> and the Mikasuki also used to give out hotel rooms, which was a huge motiva motivator for me, because it's just like I love staying in hotel rooms. I don't know why. It's just like this weird thing I like doing. I just feel like classy. <laughs> I just feel classy when I'm staying in the hotel rooms, and they weren't bad either. They were nice. They were nice hotel rooms, um, but yeah, you played for five hours, and they gave you a they gave you a hotel room. Um, they also took that away, and uh, so like during that five hours, like I always had like this mindset, like oh, I'm just gonna, you know, I'll play tight because I mean I wasn't even as interested in the money as I was in the in the hotel room, and like the whole entire goal was just like okay, well, um, I need to I just want to lose as little money as possible until I get my hotel room, and then I'll leave, you know. And that caused me to play right, actually. It ended up causing me to play right instead of rushing because I knew I had to stay there for five hours, so I had to preserve my stack. Um, they also used to have free fucking drinks at the Mikasuki. Now, I mean, it's it's like it's so fucking ridiculous. Like for one, like draft beer, like the cheapest beer they have is like four twenty-five. And for like a Heineken, I mean, it doesn't really matter because I always give them like the difference anyway. For a Heineken, it's like four sixty. It's like pretty much like five bucks a beer is what's gonna cost you because I just give them chips, you know. So getting drunk there is not really that big of an option. But if you do want to get drunk there, I don't recommend beer. Uh, get the Mongolian motherfucker because that thing is that thing is really good. Like it'll hit you strong. It's like eight different liquors um and really one is really good unless you're trying to get like really drunk like one mongolian motherfucker will treat you right uh, anyway what was i even talking about it's kind of like kind of like ranted on about something about game selection and then what the bikasuki used to have my, my shirt i look like a fucking waiter uh what else do i want to talk about Oh yeah, um, I kind of decided uh, yesterday that I'm going to be taking breaks in between sessions. I will be taking a, a, a extended period break after this one, like minimum three days. But I'm feeling really good tonight. I'm feeling really, really good tonight, and uh, I just I'm in the I'm in the mood to play, and uh, I play best when I'm just in the mood to play. I'm patient, you know, I'm focused. Uh, my body feels good. Let me turn this light off for a second. My body feels good, so yeah, fuck it, gotta go play. Um, if you watch my logs, uh, you would know that um, when I first started playing poker again, you know, I did really well in the beginning. This is kind of just like a recap of what's happened. I gave myself a 3k bankroll and uh, just starting off with like $300 in my pocket I turned that $300 and into around like fucking like four grand and uh, I deposited a good amount of that money you know, so like just in case I did tilt off, it's kind of like one of my biggest worries is you're gonna find out. I did deposit, so like my bankroll's still intact. Um, and I was up to around like $7,000 at one point. 
and uh, that's when I started kind of like tilting everything away. I started getting emotional, making really bad decisions. Um, and it went really bad. Like I just had a, you know, a losing session and a losing session and a losing session, losing like three to four hundred dollars every single time. And then I had this really, really bad session at Magic City where I just totally lost my mind and went all in with Jack Seven of Diamonds and uh, ended up losing around like 1100 that night. And that was two sessions ago. So, and then like my last session I made, uh, I made $1,230. So I ended up recovering from that night, which is so, it's fucking fantastic. I made all the money I tilted back in that one giant session. So I feel like, you know, if I didn't have a, a string of good sessions, like this poker thing just kind of like wouldn't have worked out and I probably would have quit the challenge from three to $10,000. But I have life again. And uh, my bankroll right now is around, I'd say 5,600. I haven't done the, like, the math exactly, but I'd say my working bankroll for poker is around 5,600. So yeah, I'm really optimistic that you know, I'm gonna be doing good for now in the now in the rest of the month, I guess. <sighs> also, I don't know if this is a just a thing, but the day I started losing is the day that I left my headphones at home. And then I lost my headphones, so I no longer had headphones. I think that when I get around people and start hearing them like too much, I start getting like a little too into the game and the meta side of things. And it starts fucking up my game because I, I stop taking like a mathematical approach to it. And I start thinking like, oh, am I being, am I being too tight? Am I being too, you know, like respect me? Do I have to like gamble it up with them? And to a certain uh, point, you do have to to get that kind of respect and the, the kind of, like, image, I guess. Um, but I kind of just took it too far. And that's that's what kind of, like, led to all the tilting. It's just like, oh, I gotta, like, be crazy. You know, I gotta do all these things I see other people doing. But when I'm listening to music, I'm not thinking about anything. I'm, I'm like, hardly even, like, watching anyone. I'm just kind of, like, in my own little world. And I think that's the the best place for me to be some of the time. It's just my own little world where I don't, I'm not influenced by others, but just like, you know, concentrated on myself. Look at the little sign. That's how you know you're at the Mick. You see that sign. You can see it from like miles away. God, this place is really out in the middle of the fucking nowhere, like right in the Everglades. Like you can just take, keep taking the road I was on straight and uh, you'll be in Naples within like an hour and a half. Here's the casino from the side. Yeah. I know I don't, no one watches these or no one subscribed, but for some weird reason, I really enjoy making these vlogs. Like they, <laughs> they really keep me positive for some, for some like strange reason. Okay, motherfucker, turn. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Old motherfucker. How much? Probably old. Let's check it out. Let's see if they're old. Are they old? Really? You're gonna go in front of me now? What are you doing? Just pick a side and fucking stick to it, you stupid fuck. Nah, he's fucking like young. He looks like a douchebag, too. I guess that explains it. Alright, now I'm freaking being lit up by these lights. Yeah. decent amount of people here tonight. Should have a problem with players being present. Okay. And you know I like parking in the back. 
they have like so much extra security here now like i'm no longer even like worried about my car like i leave that shit unlocked sometimes all right guys i'm here I'll let you know what happened after the session <laughs>